so welcome in the precious and glorious name of Jesus to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. You know, I want to share a message that I have had to live out. It is a message in which I spent so much of my life walking in a cycle of defeat and lack. I look at Deuteronomy 28, and in it I see all these promises that belong to us as believers. We are meant to be the head and not the tail, that we come above only and not beneath. Everything we put our hands to prospers. We're blessed in the country, blessed in the city, blessed in everywhere we go. Think about all those blessings. And in reality, I would not say that I walked in those. I was definitely not the head. I definitely was not the one coming above only. And I was not blessed at everything I put my hands to. I look and I said, Lord, something is wrong. Something has got to change. Because everywhere I went, it was like I carried a gray cloud. And I came to this place one day where I realized that I was not giving a very good witness. I was not presenting a witness of an overcomer, but one going through it. I was not giving a witness of one who had something that others should desire. So I really pray that this message, and I'm going to share insight from John G. Lake, will really bless and minister, that it would be really a now word that would take you out of that place, that cycle of defeat and lack, and bring you to the place where you truly are the head and not the tail, that you come above only and not beneath, and everything you put your hands to prospers. It's blessed. So are you ready? If you are, let's press in, let's pray, and let's receive what he has for us today. Father, we come in the name above all names. It's in that name. It is holy completely because of the name of Jesus. And I'm so grateful, Father, that you bring us into the secret place of your presence, that each person, Father, listening or watching, has a divine appointment with you today. That today will be the day of the breaking through. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day where everything can change if we will hear your voice, if we will hear your word, and Father God, receive fully what you're saying to us. So Father, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart. Holy Spirit, come and just breathe on the word and let it have rich revelation. A now precious word from heaven, the bread of his presence, the warm manna from heaven. Father God, that is giving life to each person as they receive it from you in the name of above all names, the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. Go to John chapter 5. In here we see the story of a man for 38 years is afflicted. Now, think about that for one minute. 38 years in that time period. And I don't know what the average life expectancy was, but that was a long time. And when I'm talking today, not just about, you know, these battles that we go through, uh, uh, you know, because the enemy is always attacking believers. And we're going to have that right up until the day that we meet Jesus. But I'm talking about long-term cycles of just constant defeat and lack. Things that have gone on for years where you've been standing and standing and everything you're doing is not working. Something has got to change. Because God, I look at, you've given me this promise and I never seem to get closer to it. Year after year, we're not talking short term, we're talking long term, like this man in John chapter 5, verses 2 through 9. And it says, Now there is in Jerusalem, by the sheep gate, a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethsaida, having five porches. In this lay a great multitude of sick people, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the waters. And I just feel I want to stop there because that's where many of us are at. We see the place of our breakthrough. We can get so close to our breakthrough, but it seems like everybody else gets it, not us. Everybody else seems to be able to get to the water, and we can't. Listen to this. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water, when whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there with an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he'd been there in that condition a long time, he said to him, 
Do you want to be made well? And I can hear in that question, there is a real call to truth. And I want to say this, and I say this in love, and I say this in sincerity. There is this divine appointment that we have in the secret place in which the Lord wants to speak to us. And a lot of time that word comes as a word of correction. It may come as a word of edification. And it may come as a word of encouragement. It may come as all three. And he may have to start with this word of correction. This word that almost sounds stern and mean. Do you really want your breakthrough? And we've got to ask ourselves, do we really want a breakthrough? Or do we do like this man did? Listen, this is a closed question. I've been in sales a long time. And in sales, you're trained open, closed questions. Open questions are questions in which you invite the person to give you more information. So you're encouraging, say as much, tell me, tell me, tell me about this. A closed question is simply yes or no. So he's asking him a closed question. Do you want to be made well? Yes or no? It is a question that has to go deep, right to his spirit. And God wants you to hear in that secret place where he's speaking from his heart to your heart. Do you really want the breakthrough? Now listen to the response of the man. The sick man answered, Sir, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I'm coming, another steps down before me. And the, so he's got the excuse. His immediate response was not yes, but an excuse. And I want to say that because I've been there, that I've been in that place where you were asked this question and your response is to give all the reasons why you haven't got it. All the reasons, all the things on injustices, why things are unfair, why it's just not right, but it's not your fault. I am a victim here. And, and so we deflect. We're not answering the question. And we're stuck in this place where we have fully persuaded ourselves. I'm a victim that I cannot get to that water because every time I try, I fail. And it doesn't mean, you know, we're not trying. Can I make steps, you know, slowly over a period of time? No, we've come to that place where God, I simply cannot do it. I am grateful that Jesus did not just quit on him. And Jesus won't just quit on you, but he will call you and he will say, hear what I have to say. And they said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. See, Jesus had reasons why he could have tried and said, listen, I can't do anything today. It's a Sabbath. He could have done so many things. He said, listen, I'm not sure that you're sincere enough. I am grateful that the Lord in his rich mercy is calling you to come into the secret place. And he knows your heart. He knows sometimes that we're not sincere. He knows sometimes we get to the place where we're so comfortable with the devil that we know that we're not really keen or interested in breaking through because I've become so accustomed to this life of defeat. And I like it because it gives me an excuse because when I fail or I fall short, I immediately have my excuse. But see, when you step out of this, there's an accountability and there's a responsibility because you were called as a believer to be an overcomer, to be the head and not the tail. And if you're not there, then something's not right. And it's not an excuse, but a running to him, seeking his face and saying, Lord, show me, is there something I'm missing? Or do I just have to stand and hold on? Now, John G. Lake said, hunger is a mighty good thing. It is the greatest persuader I know of. It is a marvelous mover. There's a certain spirit of desperation that accompanies hunger. And I would say that when you get to the place where you say, I'm tired of being tired. I'm tired of this cycle. I've looked and I've done this again and again and again. 
and I've expected different results. God, the reality is, it's not working. And I understand that you're right, I'm wrong. That you don't change. And the one who has to change in this situation is me. See, many of us, when I, and I can tell because see, I've been there. When you ask the question, you ask the closed question, they immediately respond with the excuse. They immediately have to tell the story. And they are more vibrant, they're more uh, um, detailed in their story. They understand, they're so familiar with their mountain. And I want that would break off you today. And you become more familiar with your promise. Because you're hungering after this. You're desperate after this. You think about it all the time. You long for this. You know, I looked for many years. I wanted to return to America for many reasons. And towards the end, I knew something was stirring in me. And it was become, become real. And I can tell you, I bought a map of Chicago. I bought books on Chicago. I, I drew a big mural of Chicago on my wall. I got familiar because there was a promise in me from the Lord, I'm taking you back. And I look forward. It built in me. For so long, I spent my life focused on my excuse. All the reasons why, all the things that people had done. And I could not tell you much about the promise. That's about the change. Because in the secret place of His presence, He wants to so lift you and break off of you first the victim mindset and that you now would begin to focus and feed on the promise. But there has to be a hunger. John G. Lake said, God is an all-round God. He operates from every side. The artist puts a halo around his head to show there is a radiance of His glory in the person. They might as well put it around his feet or any part of his person. It is the radiant glory of the indwelling of God, radiating out through the personality. There is nothing more wonderful than the indwelling of God in the human life. You are not alone. And you're not going to do this in your power. You're not going to do this in your might. You're going to do it by Him. You have to understand that He abides in you. And as you come, sweeping away all those excuses, and you focus on Him, and you lay a hold of the promise and get your eyes on Him, and allow Him to do what only He can do in you and through you, He will bring you into the place of victory. It is not your responsibility your responsibility is to believe Him, to listen and obey Him. It is His responsibility to perform the Word and to bring it to pass. Now, continuing, Lake said, But my opinion is that one of the works of the Holy Ghost is that of a preparer. He comes and prepares the heart of men in advance by putting a strange hunger for that event that has been promised by God until it comes to pass. <laughs> And one of the things that God begins to do in this calling of calling to you to come into the secret place that you have a divine appointment is something stirs on the inside of you. Something is telling you that their breakthrough is at hand. Something begins to show you that you can break through. You can get out of this. The fact that you're listening to this message means something in you is stirring you that this cycle is not your destiny. This is not what God has for you. And you, the Spirit of God is calling you to come into the sacred place that He might show you, help you, because the weapons of your warfare are mighty for the pulling down of strongholds, wrong mindsets that we have allowed to so hold fast that we don't move forward in the things God has. We are held captive by the wrong things. Listen to this. In Psalm 62, verses 1 and 2. Psalm 62, this is a Psalm of David. And David said, Truly my soul silently waits for God, for from Him comes my salvation. And that word salvation is Yeshua. I like that. From Him comes my Jesus. He alone is my rock 
and my salvation. And once again, the word for salvation here is Yeshua. He is my defense, which is strong tower. I shall not be greatly moved. Now, the word here for silently wait is a Hebrew word which means to repose or to silence your soul. He's not talking about your spirit. The problem is in the soul arena, the mind, the will, and our emotions. We get so stirred up. We get so upset. We get so caught. And that cycle of defeat is constantly being fed. How we replay in our heads, in our hearts, that, that story of how we are the victim. It's so big in us that when the Lord asks you a closed question, you don't answer with a simply yes or no, but you immediately answer with what's in an abundance in you. And we have to come first and repose and say to your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions, be quiet. And it's talking about a place where you've you know, been vigorously worked up. And you say, be quiet. You stop that soul man, that man that is focused on your hurts, focused on the injustices, focused on the unfair things done to you. And you say, be silent, because I've got to hear the Lord. You know, when you are in a room filled with a whole lot of noise, and you're trying to have a conversation with somebody, it gets very difficult. But there is a place where somehow you can get on the same plane and you're speaking heart to heart. And despite the noise, you hear each other. And God wants to bring you to that place where you are in tune with Him. You have a hearing heart to hear everything He has to say. I have found people come and say, I have sought the Lord and I've asked Him, and he's not telling me what's wrong. But we've never done this. Because in this place, if I silence my soul, silence my emotions, my feelings, my demands, my opinions, all that stuff, and I come into the secret place, I have an encounter with Jesus. I meet with Jesus. You should come away knowing you have met with him. And when you meet with him, everything changes. So you should never be. God doesn't play games. God doesn't just call you to come into the secret place and then keep backing up and backing up. The word is very clear that if you draw nigh unto him, he'll draw nigh to you. But there are conditions. And part of the condition is to come to the place where you humble yourself. And that humbling is silencing the soul area of your life so that you come to speak spirit to spirit, not soul to spirit. Not coming, let me tell you, God, all the big things that I've gone through. He fully knows. But this time, He wants you to get the breakthrough, not sit there like a counseling session where you have to regurgitate once again everything you've gone through. And I'm not belittling it. I'm not saying that what you've gone through is not tough or bad. He's fully aware of that. But what he wants to do is get you out of it, not remain in it. Now, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 11 through 13, listen to what Paul said. O Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. And I want to stop there. We're speaking, and we're speaking such that our hearts are open towards you. We're able to hear you. We are listening to you. We are soft towards you. We're not coming with a mean or harsh spirit. We're not coming critical and judgmental. We're open. I'm willing to listen, but I have so much to say. And he continues and said, You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your affections. Now in return for the same, now I speak as to children, you also be open. So he's calling, he said, listen, I've got much to say to you, to help you, but I need you to be open to hear me because I'm not the one that's restricting you. And I find many people come and they will tell me, I sought the Lord. But when you talk to them, their problem is the Lord. The Lord has failed me. The Lord's not answering me. And they'll go through it. And the reality is, 
They're being restricted not by the Lord, but by their affections, the soul arena, their mind, their will, and their emotions. Those hurts that have become so vibrant, so big, so auctionated, because you constantly feed them. You constantly create an environment for them to grow bigger. And we've got to come to a place where we starve that and feed our spirit. The promise has to become bigger, louder, clearer. It has to be the thing that you can tell people about. I can tell where people are in their place of victory by what they have and an abundance coming out of them. Is it this, their defeat, or is it, let me tell you, of the greatness of my God? Because if you will switch gears and get out of this place and open your heart wide to the Lord, because He needs to be able to speak into your life, and that includes a word of correction, a word of edification, a word of comfort. And we, a lot of time, I like the words of comfort, but the word of correction, I'm not sure I want. And the truth is, the thing that often we need the most, it is the correction. Lake went on to say, Daniel says that he was convinced by the study of the book of prophecy, especially that of Jeremiah, that the time had come when they ought to be delivered from the captivity in Babylon. The 70 years was fulfilled, but there was no deliverance. So he diligently set his face to pray it into being. And God begins to stir you because what he wants is that you come into the secret place and he imparts his vision and that you pray it forth on the earth. We are God, you do it. Why are you not stirring the water? Why are you not taking me and putting me in the water? God, why aren't you? And the Lord is saying, I'm calling you to come to the secret place to hear what I have to say. Receive my words. Receive my vision. Receive my promise. And as you do, begin to pray it by the Spirit on the earth. You know, I look at, for example, revival. I love revival. But revival has to start in the heart of the Father. His desire for revival has to start there, and we have to allow the Spirit of God to impart that desire to us so that we're praying forth His desire on the earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. If He doesn't want it, it ain't coming. I can ask and pray all that I want. If it's not in align with His will, it ain't happening. But see, the Spirit of the living God takes of the heart the depth of the Father, of what the Father really desires, which He always desires that which is perfect, that which is good, that which is the best for you. And the Spirit of God takes of that and He imparts that vision to you to pray so that it comes forth on the earth, so that we become co-workers with under Him. We have a responsibility. We have a place in this to do. In Deuteronomy 28.1, and I read a part of this earlier. Now it shall be, now sorry, now it shall come to pass, if you will diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to obey carefully all His commandments. Now read Deuteronomy 28. If you do this, look at all the blessings. You will be the head and not the tail. You will come above only and not beneath. Everything you put your hands to prospers. You'll be blessed in the country, blessed in the city, blessed everywhere you go, blessed. Your basket is blessed. But here is the condition. Now it shall come to pass if, and we don't like that word if, because that puts a responsibility on us, but that's the key to your breakthrough. If you will diligently, if you will listen with listening to my voice, and the only place that you can effectively hear His voice is in the secret place of His presence where you come and you are real before Him. No excuses, no hiding. You come because you want to meet with Him. You come because you want to hear His voice. It is a personal pursuit. It is not manufactured. It is not plastic. It is not artificial. It is real or it's not. And the secret place of His presence is where I pursue Him.
because I want to meet with him. I'm not putting it on as a show. I'm not doing it for any other reason that I want a need to meet with him. And in that place, I come and I make the decision to hear and listen to what he has to say. Not my opinion of it. Some of us have really learned how to hear what somebody's saying without listening. We can even regurgitate back, as I've said, what a person said verbatim. And yet not one syllable, not one word penetrates beyond here. It just goes in and out. And God is looking for something that gets into the heart, something that gets deeper, and so touches every fiber of your being. In Jesus are words of life. Now those words of life, if you are hearers, if you can hear, you hear those words of life and they change everything. One word changes. There was a massive number of people during Jesus' earthly ministry that heard him physically, but only a remnant that heard him spiritually. And those words changed them. Even those who did not hear him spiritually recognized there was something about his words. But God wants you to go further than that. Not just you come in, there's something about your words. He wants you to know and experience his words. For his words to touch you, to go into you, and to reverberate in you, to linger, to have an impact, an effect in you. John G. Lake says, God's purposes come to pass when your heart and mind get the real God cry. And the real God prayer comes into our spirit. And the real God yearning gets our nature. Something is going to happen. Where there's something bigger in us. That this time, God, I am meeting with you. This time I am listening to you. This time I am hearing and you can tell because you repeat it back. If you've done an active listening class, you repeat back and you're able to explain what they mean. I have a wonderful Holy Spirit and so do you. Abiding in you. The presence of God in you. He will enable you to get the revelation of what the Lord is speaking. He will share it with you with great compassion, with full understanding but he will come with a sword to circumcise off that which is causing the problem. Now, sometimes that hurts and it's not fun, but let me explain something. Do you want to continue in the cycle of the pain, the defeat, and the lack, or do you want out? Is this the time where you are hungry enough and desperate enough and saying, God, I want out? John G. Lake went on to say, And let me tell you, no human stoppage, because the thing settled deep in the nature of man, too deep for any material remedy to get at it. It takes the Almighty God and the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus Christ to get down into the depth of man's nature and find the real difficulty that is there and destroys it. And that's what God will do. He will get down into the very core of your being. He will address the real issue, our issues, and He will work on them, fix them, set you free. In His presence, there's liberty. And you should never walk away from Him, from a real encounter, without a greater degree of liberty in your life. Because we're always going from one level of glory and liberty to another. Being set free as we receive and abide in His Word. That abiding in His Word that He talked about is a place of hearing it, really hearing it, and receiving it, and doing it. This Word is life to me. That place where I delight to do Your will, O God. I'm no longer questioning it. I'm no longer saying, okay, I'm not sure I'm okay with this, but I'll take this. This I'm good with. Can we talk about this? No, I've come to this place where I know how good He is, that His thoughts towards me are better than mine. His provisions are perfect. I have to simply trust and know that He's got my best at heart.
and that he will not fail me if I will let go. You know, we often put that sticker on our back of our car that says that Jesus is my co-pilot. No, he's not. Jesus does not settle for being co-pilot. He either is the driver or he's not. There is no ifs with God. The if has to come where we choose if we will surrender or if we will not. Let me continue here. Lake said this, and Lake was talking personally, and I can share a similar story. I finally got to the place where my supreme cry was for deliverance. Tears were shed for deliverance for three years before the healing of God came to us. I could hear the groans and the cries and the sobs and feel the wretchedness of our family's soul. My heart cried, my soul sobbed, my spirit wept tears. I did not know enough to call directly on God to, for it. That place where we remain stuck, but something is stirring in us, that it is not right. We know this is not God's best. And maybe you've got that revelation, thank God. Let us press on into the deeper waters. That place of a breaking through today. Let's no longer stay here. Because this is not what God wants. The woman with the issue of blood. The Lord didn't just heal her. Because she was so impacted. You know, think about her life. All those years of suffering. Because of the blood, she had to be removed from society. There's a social scar. There's an emotional scar. There's a financial scar. There's a mental scar. She was injured, not just ill. And the Lord didn't just say, be healed, but be made whole. And that's his desire for you. It's not just to fix the problem, but to make you whole. All the years that the locusts have destroyed and taken, he wants to return to you above and beyond. You can say, well, I've blown it. I've gone like this man 38 years, it's too late. God is able, read Joel chapter 2, able to restore back, but there has to be a real rending of the heart and not the garments. There has to be a real decision, not an outward display, not a playing of games, but something real today where God, I want the breaking through. I want things to change. Let me finish with this. John G. Lake said, but bless God. One thing matured in my heart, a real hunger. And a real hunger of a man's soul must be satisfied. It must be satisfied. It's a law of God. That law of God is in the depth of the spirit. God will answer the heart that cries. God will answer the soul that asks. Christ comes to us with divine assurance and invites us when we are hungry to pray, to believe, to take from the Lord that which our soul covets and our heart asks for. Today is the day of salvation. You don't have to put off until tomorrow, but the breakthrough can begin today. Things may not look like they have changed outwardly, but you'll know there's been a change inwardly. And you should walk in that revelation that there's been a breakthrough on the very inside of me. I know that I know that I'm free. I know that I know that I am this time the head and not the tail. Because it changes the way you walk. It changes the way you respond. So that when Jesus comes to you and says, do you really want to be made well? Your immediate response is yes. Because it's everything you've been thinking about. It's everything you've been standing on. It's everything you know. And you're just looking for the suddenly of God, when He will suddenly move, when He will suddenly do. No more excuses. You find a way, whether it was crawling an inch every day, but you found a way to get to the water. Nothing is keeping you from getting to the water today. This day, you are ready. No more looking at the crowd. No more looking at all the excuses, but Jesus, my eyes are on you. This day, I silence this soul. I am tired of this soul being passionate about its opinions, 
its injustices. I want to be passionate in my pursuit and in my worship. And I encourage you to take time and to really worship. Time and to get your eyes off of this onto Jesus in real worship. That place where you pray to get into prayer. That place where you know all of a sudden you have silenced this. That's when you've entered in. See, many of us come and this is so loud. And we come and we simply ask. We don't hear anything, we leave. And God has said, I want an appointment with you. I want to meet with you. I want to share heart to heart with you. I want to so touch you, bless you. I have so much to give you. Yet you come and you go. There's no fellowship. There's no communion. You're so busy because this is so loud. I pray that in the name of Jesus, this message has blessed you. I pray that you receive it and get a hold of it today. And allow Him to bring you beside waters that are still and quiet. So that He can restore your soul. He can refresh you, renew you. This day. I thank you for watching. And I just want you to know that I'm praying with you. We're standing with you even right now in the name of Jesus. That today, today, in the depth of His love and His care, in the depth of His authority, that you come today as the day of your breaking through. No more excuses. God, truly give us ears to hear. Let us hear everything you have to say. Father, if it's a word of correction, let us receive it. Because, Father, if your Father and we are a child, and you love us, you discipline us, you correct us, let us learn how to submit to that correction, which is not always fun or easy at the time, but what it produces, Father. We need what it produces. I thank you for breaking through today, for wrong mindsets falling in the name of Jesus, and for our liberty, for a new abiding in your word, a new pressing in and receiving rich revelation from the Word. That the Word, Father God, they would love it more. And they would experience your love in the Word. Touching them. Every word having such a life to it. That it lingers. It reverberates. It grows. And it changes. I thank you, Father. And I said I thank you for watching. I pray that if this message has blessed you, minister to you. Would you please like, share, and subscribe? Because it really does make a difference. And, I, and I, I thank you for it. We want to reach as many people in this hour and bring people to that place in the secret place of experiencing a living word. Because one word, one living word from heaven will change everything in your life. No more plastic sermons. No more inspirational messages. But now words from heaven. I would also ask, would you please consider becoming a prayer partner? You can do it officially or unofficial. To do it official, you sign up on our website, robertpairs.org, on our partner page. It costs you nothing. You will receive invites to our Zoom meeting. But we just want you to stand with us in prayer. It's just a commitment to stand. And that commitment, you'll find more information on our website because together, we want to have an impact for the kingdom. And I can't do it without people standing with me in prayer. And I'm so grateful for that. Um, and I would also ask and say, if you don't have a local church and you're looking for one, consider joining our online service. You know, sign up at robertpairs.org on the About page and you'll get our invites. Uh, and I just pray that you would just be so blessed in those services. And finally, if the Lord puts your heart to be a financial partner, we thank you for that. We trust the Lord to stir in the right hearts of the right people to bring them forth because it costs money. But I want the ministry to be a statement of faith too. Amen. So I thank you. I bless you. And I encourage you to check out the series on The Secret Place. And remember that this is the day. Today. Things change today. Don't put it off till tomorrow. But today come with ears to hear and eyes to see and a hearing heart. That you might hear what he has to say, whether it's a word of correction exhortation, comfort are all three. Amen. Thank you. Be blessed in the name above all names, the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you.